Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another session of the alumni talk series by the Biotech Research Club. We're really excited to have Dr. Ganesh Karamur here with us for the talk. Uh, Dr. Ganesh did his B.Tech in Biotechnology at IIT Madras and graduated in 2008. He then went on to do his PhD in Molecular Biophysics at UT Southwestern Medical Center, Dallas, working on G-protein signaling in the lab of Dr. Elliot Ross. After this, he was a NCBS Cambridge postdoctoral fellow in the lab of Dr. Christian Freza and Dr. Sunil Lakshman, where he did various projects on understanding yeast metabolism, uh, designing metabolite sensors, and applying these to study metabolite metabolic rewiring in cancers. He then joined AstraZeneca as a senior scientist in the basic R&D division, where he is a mem uh, member of the Discovery Sciences team working on different oncology projects. Today, he'll be talking about his journey from ITM to graduate school and on to pharma and R&D. I kindly request everyone to turn off your videos and my, uh, mics during the talk, unless you have a question. And you uh, feel free to type in your questions in the uh, chat box. Over to you, Manish. Thank you. Thank you, Shriya um, and everyone. This is uh, really, really exciting for me because IITM always holds a special place in my heart. So it's always nice to come back, uh, meet with uh, Janta. <laughs> that will never change, hopefully. Um, so yeah, so I think uh, thank you, Shriya, because you took away pretty much what I was going to say in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I will still go ahead and say it. So the way I thought to do this was, like I said, 15 minutes of just a uh, little more detail on what I've done and uh, where I got to and how the journey, as I mentioned in the title. And then we can have a uh, no holds barred discussion. Just ask anything and uh, I will do my best to try to answer the question. So let me pull up my file. Um, I'll show this PowerPoint file. Yeah, select window or screen. Yes, so let me know if you can see my slides. I should go to the first one. Yes. OK, and now in slideshow? Yes. Yes. Perfect, OK. Uh, I just wanted to use slideshow because I really put effort into this, just like we used to do for all our BT courses and non-BT courses. So, <laughs> so I did uh, try to do something. Anyway, so um, I think uh, we've already gotten past this. So I'll just go ahead. So what have I done since I came? I'll just rush through this because I think Shriya nicely mentioned that. One thing may be not really important, but worth mentioning is I did my internship at Cambridge during IITM, uh, which I think was probably the that along with the courses I did, especially cell biology, uh, big, big thanks to Dr. AGK and um, others who took the course back then, um, because that is what really got me interested into biology research and what is the level of understanding that we have and what is not known. So did the internship in Cambridge in a lab of Dr. Rob K. He was studying uh, chemotaxis. He's now retired. Um, but I went there, did some work with Dictyostelium. Um, also, I had worked with Dr. Basker before this, uh, not on Dicti, on some Arabidopsis stuff, but that, again, there was a connect there. Finished up the internship, came back to IITM, jumped to UT Southwestern, as we've said before, then came back to Cambridge to start the first half of that uh, Cambridge NCBS fellowship. Uh, over the next three years, I basically jumped between NCBS and Bangalore and Cambridge between the two labs, Lakshman and Fredza lab. Uh, had a great time, and I'll uh, tell you a little more about all of these. And eventually, um, not eventually, so far, uh, last step move has been back to UK and working at AstraZeneca uh, as a scientist now in the basic R&D. So um, I just wanted to break down the journey. So one slide for each sort of pitch stop. What was I really doing? Um, studying, but also trying other things uh, while in INSTI. So uh, I, I did a lot of coding. I picked it up during INSTI, I would say. Um, 
then ended up making websites and working for web ops during Shastra for I think the last two years a lot, which was super fun. Uh, made amazing friends. These were my other uh, co course at the time, um, KVM and Shobhan. And uh, generally speaking, I think just like most of us do, try different things, find out what is interesting. And uh, I was really bad at Litsoc, that I remember very well. Um, but yeah, just doing extracurricular outside. So what did I learn? Uh, some of what I learned, and this is obviously only a small list, not the full list, was that I really like coding. I really like uh, sitting at a computer, writing code, the uh, troubleshooting, writing code, and understand what you can do with programming. So I was learning different things. I did not use it for biology. I did not use any bioinformatics or computational work uh, in college. But uh, just a quick example, I used this to make a website when I was at my internship because we were doing a large screen. <clears throat> and we needed a way to quickly uh, look at all the hits that we had got and all the phenotypes I had got. So I used uh, my scripting skills to make a website, a graphical display. Uh, using an Excel sheet as the database from which to nicely show colors and everything. So basically, yeah, I love biology also. Um, as I told you, the research internship and also my final year project with uh, Gumadi sir, all were really, really interesting things on different topics. And I completely um, got my love for biology there. In within biology, through these experiences, I realized proteins were really cool. Uh, other things were also interesting, but for me, understanding protein, biochemistry, structure, how proteins talk to each other, how signal transduction works, all of this I found really interesting. So that's why I decided I want to do a PhD and specifically in focus on signal transduction. So that led me to UT Southwestern, where the entire world thought I was uh, doing amazing stuff, uh, looking at DNA. And, but what I, I thought I was really doing, this is actually the first paragraph from a poem. I used to write some poems uh, that time, um, saying basically, I was hoping to cure cancer, essentially. Entering grad school or PhD full of energy, talking about uh, signal transduction and wanting to cure cancer and hoping to find life's answer. In reality, what was I doing? Uh, I worked in Elliot's lab. Um, worked on G protein signaling, as uh, you already know. Uh, very, very interesting biochemistry work. Uh, a lot of hours in the cold room purifying proteins, doing enzyme assays, and basically trying to understand the results from the experiments I was doing. Um, but essentially, also building other skills like uh, how to design assays, how to build new uh, experiments, and so on. A couple of papers came out of that work. But as I said in IATM's case, the same happened here. I was also doing other things outside of the lab. So I picked up running, uh, ran a few half marathons and everything. And I also loved hiking. But this is just a snapshot of the things I did. I also went out and met a lot of people outside of the university through networking events, industry uh, conferences, and things like that. So what did I learn there? I learned that research is indeed super fun, and it's something that I really like personally. I still love biology, uh, not necessarily the case for everyone who goes on to do a PhD. And like I mentioned, it was really fun for me to meet new people. Um, meet new people from other labs, from other universities, from outside university, people are working in industry, people, just people, just meeting people. And I met, for example, through the running club, everyone you can imagine and that why that's one of the reasons i like going back to the running club and meeting people every other week also uh, talking to my own prof elliot and other profs i learned that a prof job uh, is certainly something uh, that sounds like fun and something i would love to do and um, also i just got better at making ppts and word docs and like writing reports and um, writing some grant proposals also uh, so yeah, that that in a snapshot is some of the things what I learned, and we can come back to this later. But at the end of my PhD, um, I realized uh, protein trans signal transduction is cool, protein is interesting, but I want to try something different. So that's when I approached Sunil and Christian, and I applied for that postdoc fellowship and got it. 
Um, and this was to do with metabolism, which is completely different in a cell biology sort of setting. So what did the world think I was doing? They still thought I was looking at DNA and like doing amazing stuff. What did I think I was doing? I still thought I was curing cancer. What did I actually do? I worked on multiple different projects, just showing a couple of examples here. But the overall theme was to see how mitochondria, which is one of the center pieces of metabolism in the cell through the glycolysis and TCA cycle, um, was controlling this other master regulator of cells, the TORC1 complex, uh, and how both of them interact in order to regulate uh, cellular homeostasis and physiology of living beings. So I had never uh, studied mitochondria before in my PhD, um, nor in IITM. I mean, I knew we see what they were, but I didn't do any research project on them. Um, I did not know much about TORC1 beyond a couple of papers I had read. But I brought in my protein interest, and that's where I did one of these projects, which was to basically build a library of biosensors to try to identify new biosensors for some very critical metabolites in cells. And because uh, I think um, Einstein said it best when it was uh, Einstein or Feynman, I can't remember. If you can't see something, you can't measure it. So there are a lot of metabolites in cells and mass spec doesn't always work. So you need a better tools and methods. So that's why this project happened. Uh, then in Sunil's lab, I started another genome wide scale screen in yeast um, that led to some interesting findings. One of which was this work that we published last year on methionine, how it as a metabolite also acts as a signaling agent, just like the way you think of calcium. So methionine uh, leads to regulation of this master protein called GCN4. And you can read all about that in the JBC paper from last year. So what did I learn from this experience? Um, again, I still like coding. So analysis of the data from both screens required me to be able to, I, I, I basically used coding to understand the results faster and better. I still love biology. Uh, there's uh, just so much more to be discovered and so much that is not known. But also, I realized through these projects that I was doing things which are very interesting. Um, and now I wanted to do something closer to patients. I wanted to do something where I can see the clear step from what I'm doing every day in the lab to how it would lead to a drug that would help patients suffering from disease. Um, and that's where I started uh, thinking about industry more and more. And all through this, uh, like I mentioned in uh, my PhD slide, I was talking to people outside the industry, uh, in the University of Cambridge, in NCBS, in the startups in Bangalore, um, companies in um, UK, uh, just through like, you know, friends of friends and what they call networking. And I realized many companies do really, really interesting stuff. It's not that once you go to a company, you become a robot. No, companies do very, very cool stuff, some of which are not uh, doable in academia for various reasons. And vice versa. There are things you can do only in uh, universities or academic settings, which you can't do in industry. So, uh, And I found some of those things that you can do in industry is interesting. I, talk to more people. I found some uh, interesting jobs to apply to projects. I applied to some of them. And that's how I ended up at AstraZeneca AZ or AZ. Um, so what everyone thought I was doing, I think everyone, the first thing you think is industry, lots of money. Uh, probably not true, little more, depends. Not always true is the answer. What I thought I was doing, uh, well, wearing a mask, of course, most of my time in AstraZeneca has been during COVID. So wearing masks when working in the lab, tissue culture, everything. Uh, what I'm really doing, unfortunately, I cannot tell you anything. That's according to company rules. Uh, but some of what I learned, um, industry does things very differently. Uh, the focus of how um, decisions are made. Uh, when, you, when you do an experiment, you find a result. Uh, you don't necessarily always have the opportunity, the time to follow it up unless it directly relates to the project you're working on and will uh, enable the project to move forward. Um, and I mean, I can give some examples of that later on if we have time. Um, and it is equally intellectually satisfying. 
uh, like I said, industry does very, very cool things. And it is not like only in academia, you're able to come up with uh, fun research questions or fun research projects. There is a lot that you can do in industry and it all depends, I would say at the end of the day, as with most of these things, you have to be in the right place with the right group of people. And um, I definitely have gotten lucky in some of those aspects. Um, I think uh, the big uh, learning I have personally is that there are opportunities and exciting ideas everywhere. If you follow your passion and do your homework. Uh, and try to understand what you want, what is out there, and where is the synergy, where is the connect between the two things. I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'll just finish off with some takeaways. We'll leave this on the screen while we talk, maybe. So yeah, don't be afraid to try new things. Even if they fail, you will always learn something new. Uh, try to find out what interests you, because every individual is unique. Um, and this just means noticing what you do in your daily life. Just as an example, during my PhD, a lot of my friends were going on to do MBAs and applying for jobs. And because of talking to them, a lot of time they would send me their MBA apps, the you know SOP kind that you would write for MBA schools. And I found that I was uh, really enjoying the process of editing. My English was, I think, quite uh, I was comfortable editing and helping them improve the application. So. I actually at one point thought and I still think I would like to be a science editor in some way or fashion. So um, volunteer. So give your time, offer, try to learn new things. Network. Um, and what I mean by network and definitely what I mean by smartly is uh, just talk to people, everyone around you, your professors, your friends from other departments, your uncles, your family, wherever you go, talk to them and see who they might know. and it's uh, because of tools nowadays like LinkedIn, um, you can also reach out to people outside of who you might directly know. So you can send me a LinkedIn request. Only thing I would say is uh, when you do what is like that cold calling, uh, be aware that the other person is getting probably uh, a lot of such requests. So even if not, um, there are multiple things that they are trying to do in their life and you need to catch their attention and you need to tell them why they should connect with you, why that connection is going to help them and also help you. So make it a point to be clear in your first interaction, especially with someone who you have not spoken to uh, directly when you try to connect with them through LinkedIn or send them an email or any way. Make sure you try to be clear why you are reaching out what is the reason what do you want to know uh, how how the other person can help uh, so that is very important if you if you send just blank connect requests most people will ignore you that is just uh, what uh, happens because too many people are doing that so offer help and stay in touch with those you connect and don't be afraid to ask for help and be nice when you're asking and make it worth the other person's time uh, make the other person feel like they want to help finally wear sunscreen um, I will share this link on the chat, um, but I don't know if any of you have heard or hopefully you've all heard. This was very famous in my time at INSTI. It's a fun song and it tells you in a fun way what is important in life and all the small things that we don't generally think about. So I will stop there.